Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Runcam Racer 2 micro FUD camera. In this video I'm going to show you how to operate its latest feature and then I'm going to head outdoors and compare it side by side with the Runcam Racer 1 using my new side by side comparison stand. Just like the first version, the Runcam Racer 2 features a 700 TV line CMOS sensor. It has a super low latency of 6 milliseconds its aspect ratio is set to 4x3 and the TV system can be set either to NTSC or PAL using its OSD. Currently the only color option for the Racer 2 is orange and you can choose between 2.1 and 1.8mm lens. In terms of dimensions, the Racer 2 is completely identical to the Racer 1. The version with the 2.1mm lens weighs 5.15 grams and the version with the 1.8mm lens weighs 5.63 grams. Now you probably wonder what is the difference between the Racer 2 and the Racer 1. When you get in the Racer 1 you can choose between two options for controlling the camera OSD. So you can get a version which is being controlled using the standard OSD control board and the second version is the UART control version so you can connect the camera to a free UART port on your flight controller and then it will enable you to configure the camera OSD using Betaflight and your remote controller. On the Racer 2, however, both options are available and along with the camera, you also get a selector tool that will enable you to switch between these two options. After turning on the camera, you're going to see an indication for the current control mode. So over here, you can see that now it shows joystick control. We can see the preset for the picture and the TV format. In order to switch between the modes, you will need to power up the camera while pressing the selector tool I don't have it since it wasn't sent to me along with the camera, but basically what it does is just to short between the RX and TX pads. So now I'm going to power the camera while shorting out these pads. And now you can see that the camera switched to UART control. This setting is going to be saved, so after you turn off the camera, it's going to be the same. Again, in order to switch between the settings, you can just power it up while pressing the selector tool or in case you lost it, you can just use this method. And now, as you can see, we are back to joystick control. Just as a reminder, switching between the picture presets is done by long pressing the right button. Now the camera is set to light tracks. Next, you can set it to outdoor, indoor, cloudy, twilight, and back to personal settings and then you can adjust the camera settings by yourself by pressing the center button. Here you can also adjust the white balance and you can also set the language and perform a camera reset. Long pressing the top button is going to enable you to choose the call name. You can also set the voltage alarm, choose whether to display the pilot name, timer and the voltage and also their position. You can turn on and off the sharp view which is recommended by Rancom to be used only when flying outdoors. And you can also turn on and off the widescreen, which is recommended for 16 by 9 screens. Finally, you can also set the system format between NTSC and PAL. The same configuration can be done also using the UART option and your remote controller, and you just have to configure it correctly on the beta flight. And I'm going to put a link over here to my review of the Rancom Swift 3, where I go through the settings. The big advantage of using UART control over the standard OSD control board is that if you fly a quadcopter in different lighting conditions, it's going to be much easier for you to change the presets than using the OSD control board. The next thing I'm going to do is to head outdoors and compare the Racer 2 side by side with the Racer 1. The Racer 1 is using the 2.1mm lens and the Racer 2 the 1.8mm lens. In addition, both cameras are set to the default options and in case you want to see more comparison videos for example between sharp view and non-sharp view let me know and I might post some more flight footage. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video as always if you have any questions about these cameras feel free to ask it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.
Vers l'horizon.